cursor simply allows us to sort of iterate through uh, a list, to sort of loop through it, if you will. All right. When we start this off, what do we do? We call this get contacts task. Notice that this is an asynchronous um, task, which again is like a thread. The idea being is if we had a lot of contacts, this step could take a little while and we would want to be responsive to the user's input. So in other words, while it's doing this, we don't want it sort of hogging the job of uh, the job of virtual machine. If it does that, then if we try to interact with the user interface, we're liable to get one of those ugly application not responding messages. So it was doing this in the background, and what is it doing? It's opening the database. And we already saw that code. It's going to get the writable database of the name that we've given. And if that database doesn't happen to exist, we're going to go and run that create statement to actually create the database table. Then we're going to call the get all contacts. All right. And we glance at that function. What the get all contacts does is it returns a database query from the contacts table and it's asking for an array of strings that consists of the ID, the name, I'm sorry. We're asking for the ID and the name, and we're sorting it by name. Now, it's not obvious at glancing at this, but these things are the parts of a SQL select statement. All right? So, for example, if we, were, if we were to write a SQL select statement for what we want here, what we want is we want the name and we want the ID, right? Because in that initial screen, it shows a list of contacts. We're not showing the email address or anything else. We're just showing the name. And we want the ID sort of behind the scenes. So we want the ID and the name, all right? So I'm specifying I want that from the contacts table. What do I want? I want an array of strings that consist of an ID and a name. All right. No, 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 no are all parameters to the select statement that we're not using. We could actually go in and query that. if we wanted to, do a Google search. To see what all those nulls represent. And we'll find that they represent the elements of SQLite query.
Here's all of the parameters that this. Now notice that this is an overloaded function. All right. First parameter is the query. Uh, or I'm sorry, the first parameter of the query is the table name. The second is an array of columns that we want. So, in other words, we want from the context table an array consisting of these two columns, ID and name. So we only want those two fields. Selection arguments. If we wanted to only select certain contacts, maybe for example we only wanted to see contacts from Ohio, or we only wanted to see active contacts, or there was some parameter that we wanted to choose, people who had a birthday this month, we could put some sort of select criteria in there and only return those. A group by. We can put a group by clause. In other words, if we don't want to see every individual contact, but we wanted to just see that we have 10 contacts from Ohio, 20 contacts from Michigan, and so on. A having. Having is associated with the group by. It's sort of like a select, uh, or it's sort of like a, a where clause for the group by. And then the last parameter is a sequence we wanted in. So if we're looking at this, we can see we want from the contacts table, these two columns, we're not grouping it by anything, we're not filtering it by anything, and oh yeah, we want it sorted by the name. So this get all contacts will run and what it returns is a cursor. Now, a cursor is sort of a confusing term that can be used a couple different ways, you know. When we talk about on a keyboard, when we're typing, a cursor is a little blinky thing that shows us where we are, all right? Obviously, that's not what we mean here. But part of the idea is the same. A cursor is something that marks your place in some data, all right? And when we talk about a cursor here, we're talking about marking our place among a list of data. So we, when we execute this statement, we're going to get as many contacts as we have. We might get 10 or 100 or 5 or whatever. We're going to get a cursor back. In other words, we're going to get back a mechanism that allows us to iterate through those one at a time. So. After get all contacts executes, After this executes, get all contacts, we get back a cursor. All right. Now, remember this is a background task. So this is an asynchronous task. You'll notice this a lot with asynchronous tasks. We notice this uh, when we looked at our camera example that didn't quite work, but the task part of it sort of did, or the activity part. When we have an, uh, uh, an asynchronous task, typically there's what's called a callback function. All right? In AJAX coding, there's a callback function. In all these things, there's a callback function, which means that you have an asynchronous task. What that means is if you have task one, and it calls task 2 as an asynchronous task, task 1 doesn't wait until task 2 is finished. All right? Yet, task 1 obviously needs to know when task 2 gets finished, so it can do some follow-up things. And that code that gets called when an asynchronous
asynchronous task gets finished is called a callback function. So in this case, the callback function is by default, we've already defined this as a background task, so by default, on post execute is going to be the function that gets called when this background task to get the contacts is finished. So, what do we do? We set our contact adapter, which we defined up here, to the cursor we get back. So, let's examine that. What do we mean by that? In our interface file, in our interface file, we have a list view here. A list view, as the name implies, is capable of handling a list of items. point it to the one in the layout, and we have a from and a to. is specifying that we want to take the name from our cursor and put it into the text view that is in the list. So at this point then we have a list of items. Initially, when we've done this, all we've done is created the database, therefore we have an empty cursor, and that's why we get the blank screen, because the cursor was empty. I kind of would like to see, you know, and it probably wouldn't be that hard to do, to pop up some sort of toast, if anything else, to say, hey, you know, no contacts exist, use menu to add a contact, or something like that. At any rate, here we are inflating a menu. If they've clicked the menu button. And for the case of the, the list view of the contact list, 
Our menu only consists of the add contact. So that's all we're going to see. So if they select an item, we don't have to do any kind of case statement because that's the only item that they can select. We know that they're going to do an add, and we start the activity for add. Now, where is that activity defined? That activity is defined in the manifest. Add edit contact. Now this is the case where we've defined that activity. Um, if you remember with the camera example that we did before, we also created an intent, an intent to start an activity, and we initiated it. But that was not something that I created. That was one of the standard Android ones to access the camera. In fact, there were intents for several applications to go in and um, initialize or, or, or initiate the camera. If you remember on my phone, I had the standard camera and I also had that PixArt application. So when I initiate this activity, Android is going to look out and see all the activities that are defined that match add new contact. Well, in this case, there's only the one, the one that I've created. Therefore, my screen pops up. We'll go and look at that activity in a second here, or possibly next time. I'd like to finish um, this one, though. So what we've gone up to is the initial time when we've gone in and we've hit the insert contact, and, and that menu option is called, and we go in and we insert um, we initiate the uh, intent for adding contact. That will call and that will start up the add edit contact. Now the other thing that we can do once we have something in there is we can click on an item. And what we can do when we click on that item is we start up another intent and that other intent to be to view that content, contact, to view or edit that contact. Actually, this one initially is just to view it. We have to select a menu item to, to edit it. Now, same sort of thing, we create an intent, and then we start that intent, but we put extra, we put some data out there to be passed to that activity. What do you suppose that data is that we're passing to this view contact activity? If we, were, if we click on a list of contacts and we bring up a page that shows everything about that contact, what do we need to, ca to pass from activity one to activity two? We need to pass specifically which contact, which contact we want to see the details for. So we're passing some sort of ID. All right? This mechanism of put extra, all right, is a mechanism that we can pass data back and forth between the launching activity and the activity that's going to be launched. In other words, we know when we click on this 
that we want to go and we want to call that other, we want to initiate that other activity. All right? But we know also that we don't just want to view any old contact. We want to view the specific contact that we've clicked. Therefore, we have to tell that activity which contact got clicked. So therefore, we put the ID of that contact in this extra data area so that we can pass it. Now, in my camera example, what I did or what I tried to do is pass the name of the image that I wanted to store in this, but I didn't get that to work. So we'll have to look at that again. The idea, again, of this put extra statement is we're sending a message from activity one to activity two. In this case, the message is the ID of the contact that we want to edit. Or, I'm sorry, view. So if we were to look at that view activity, one of the first things it likely does is it grabs that data and calls a database object to do a query and not return me a cursor that contains all of the contacts, but rather um, shows me a, um, you know, shows me all the fields for the one given selected contact. And let's just look briefly at that activity. And sure enough, what this is doing is, is this is plucking out of that extra data the ID so that we can then query the database and um, just the name of the person, just the name and other information of the person. We'll finish this one up last uh, next time. Just to just to re reiterate the three classes, the three classes. Oh, I'm sorry, the four classes. Three of the classes correspond to the activities. One activity is to list all your contacts. The other activity is to view a contact. The third activity is to edit or insert uh, a contact. The fourth class relates to our database connection. And again, it just makes our life easier if we can isolate all that code in one class and simply call it throughout our application. That database connector class contains code that accesses the database to return all of our contacts access the database to return just one contact, to do an insert, to do an update, to do a delete. And what I found interesting, it contains code to actually initialize the database. That is, the first time through, it will actually go and create the tables that are needed. Likewise, if there's an update, and what do I mean by an update? I mean a change in version number. All right. Remember, in the manifest, we specify the version number of our application. So if I had installed this, let's say version 1.0, and I didn't include the birthday, I went and revised my database to include the birthday, put the on update code in there. I could actually put code in there to, to, to uh, go and run that if the person's version was going from 1.0 to 1.1, or whatever I, whatever I numbered the new version. questions about any of this. Next time we'll review it um, to make sure we understand it, see if there's any questions you have, and then look at those other two activities, the activity to view and then to edit, add, or delete a contact. All right.